<laughs> it's just gonna be one of those days, isn't it? I know. <laughs> A little heavy handed there. Well, I feel sheepish. I'm still too tall. Look at my apron is this high out. Yes. Not on purpose. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, too much. Where, where, where? Huh. Huh. Thank you, that's gonna help. <laughs> Definitely not one take. Woo. In today's video, we are going to be covering all of the Cooking Light magazine recipes that I am trying this week. For your convenience, all of the recipes will be linked down below as well as a Google Doc with all of your shopping ingredients. Today, for dinner, out of this Cooking Light magazine, we're gonna be doing the tortilla soup with chorizo and turkey meatballs. And you know, as soon as I saw tortilla soup with chorizo, chorizo! I was all in. I'm making a couple of changes here. Number one, I'm using beef instead of turkey just because I had beef, I didn't have turkey, I didn't want to go buy it. Other changes, I'm upping some of the ingredients for the soup portion to, to stretch it to feed six. First of all, I'm just gonna mix up the meatballs real quick. I have one pound of ground beef and about two to three ounces of chorizo. The recipe said one, but I do what I want. I have about a quarter teaspoon of salt I'm gonna put into there. This is pink Himalayan salt that was a sample from something, so I'm just gonna use it up one egg, and a half a teaspoon each of cumin, ground coriander, and garlic powder. I'm okay with a little extra cumin. What do you think, Dave? Mm-hmm, always. I love cumin. I think it's so good. So if you wanna go heaping, heaping half a teaspoon, that's probably okay. Coriander, probably the same. I like the smoky, smokiness it has. And you're just gonna smoosh these into meatballs. It says to make 12 meatballs, but I'm probably gonna do closer to 15 or so and set these to the side. There's my meatballs, I'm gonna set them to the side. I have an onion, a couple of poblanos. This is probably over, this is probably a cup and a half and maybe two cups of onions here. And a ton of chopped cilantro here. And I have three corn tortillas. It's a joke, I know you don't make the L noise. And I'm gonna chop them with these kitchen shears into, I don't know, some kind of shape. Snowmen? Snowflakes. Uh, that we're gonna put into the soup. I'm gonna saute my veggies in my soup pot. And while that goes, I'm gonna start my meatballs in this more shallow pot over here. When I close my eyes, disconnected and tired. I did take some liberties with this recipe, so I'm also gonna add some chorizo to the onions and poblanos, in addition to having it in the meatballs, because I figure the more chorizo, the better. To our peppers and onions, we're gonna add one can of diced tomatoes and four cups of chicken broth. Put some water in the can to get the rest of the tomato juice out. Bring that to a boil. I added the meatballs to the soup and now I'm gonna add a can of cream corn because that's all I have. The recipe says like frozen corn, but I'm just trying to use this up. Should be okay, right? <laughs> Hopefully. Hopefully it's okay. And I'm gonna add my corn tortillas also. Corn tortillas and just let that simmer till it's done. We are all done with our soup. It smells so good. I tasted the broth for salt and it was totally good. So I didn't add anything else, but now is the time to do that if you would like. So we're just gonna plate it up. I feel like my meatballs are a little on the big side. So perhaps I should have gone a little bit smaller. So that's a nice big serving with two huge meatballs in there. And then you can serve with some limes and a little bit of chopped cilantro on top. Looks pretty good, right? And if you wanna do additional tortilla chips on the side, you totally can, even though there already are corn tortillas in here. There you go. Recipe number two is coming from September of 2013, and it's gonna be the coconut date truffle bites. I like this one because it's super fast and easy. You just mix it up in the food processor and chill it in the fridge for a while, and you're basically about done. But before we get into that, I wanna mention two things. Number one, I like this shirt a lot because it just speaks to my soul. This is who I am. I am just here for the food. And if you want one of these shirts yourself, I do have them for sale down below. Also this evening, I'm sipping on a sparkling water, blackberry lemonade from Walmart at a whopping 57 cents. It's quite tasty. 
We're gonna start with two thirds of a cup of salted roasted almonds and you're gonna pop them in your food processor of choice. I'm just using a Ninja. I got this as an attachment at Sam's Club a couple years ago with the food processor, the blender, a couple of blender bottle things with a blade. I like it. I think it's been good for us. I can never figure out which right there. It's gonna be loud. Process into a fine powder. You guys see those? Fine powder. We're now gonna add the dates, 30 whole pitted dates. I'm hoping that there are in fact no pits in here. This is gonna be where most of our sweetness comes from. And you wanna blend these up until they are completely processed as well. I'm just giving them a quick pinch, make sure that there's no pits in there because if I found a big pit in my little truffle balls, that would be the pits. Cue, wah, wah. And process this. <laughs> This is oddly satisfying. One half cup of hopefully unsweetened flaked coconut. I just happened to have sweetened shredded coconut because that's what I had and I didn't want to buy anything extra. So that's what we're doing. Two tablespoons of unsweetened cocoa powder. That's gonna go right in. One tablespoon of coconut oil, which I already kind of melted a little bit so I could measure it easier. Okay, it's a little drippy. Eighth of a teaspoon of salt, which, you know, the almonds were salted, so yeah, you really don't need very much. And combine. <laughs> Here is our mixture. It's still a little crumbly, but we're gonna scoop it into balls with my little scooper guy. And I'm gonna kind of roll it with my hands and make little balls out of it. And then we're gonna chill it for an hour. Don't worry, I washed my hands. You know what this makes me think of? Haley's over here working on a chemistry project. And I started, I started that question talking to her and then thought about what I was saying. So now I'm talking to you. Do you remember that Alec Baldwin skit on SNL? The sweaty balls? This is what this reminds me of. You have some beautiful balls. They're bigger than I expected. Your balls are huge. <laughs> Mom. So you really have to get in there with your hands and like really squish it together. But with the dates and the coconut oil, it will, it will stick together and not like roll around them. So after these chill for an hour, we are going to dip them into some semi-sweet melted chocolate, which is gonna be so good. You can use bittersweet. That's what the recipe calls for, but I don't have any of that. So we're just using what I have in that semi. <laughs> I'm just gonna stick these in my blast chiller. That pile of snow looks perfect. We'll just stick them in the blast chiller. See you in a bit. Okay, the last step is to take your truffles and dip them into some melty chocolate. Bloop, then until it's coated and then set it to the side to dry. It should dry pretty quick because these are cold. I've never been good at like dipping chocolate. Clearly. <laughs> I should tell the story about how I tried to make cake balls for Haley's fifth birthday. Oh yeah. I have never been so angry in my entire life. That's a whole Pinterest fail episode oh right there. Oh my gosh. And I'm sure some people are like, oh, cake balls are so easy. Don't even, don't wake the rage monster Everyone in. Everyone has their weaknesses. <laughs> Mine apparently is cake balls. <laughs> you're, in, you're killing my sick angles, dude. Oh yeah, that's a great angle right there. This chocolate covered goodness. Here, take this one right here because it's a little messy. You're in my, you're in my background. Watch out. See, let's see those lips. <laughs> <laughs> that is really good. You like it? Can I taste this one? Do you know what they taste like? Wait, wait, look at me. <laughs> <laughs> They're messy. You gotta lick your lips a little bit more than that. Andrew, you taste. Do you know what they taste like? What do you think? It's really good. <laughs> It's all over his face. What was that lip smacking there? Was that him or Haley? It was him. <laughs> you don't have to like over exaggerate the tongue. Okay. Putting that's... together a blueberry crisp tonight for dessert because why not? Little tip for you if you dab the top with some cream cheese before you put your topping on, it's very, very good. I will put the recipe for this down in the description box for you. Holy moly, this is amazing. Tonight for dinner, we're having frittata. I have eight eggs in this bowl. Here are my fresh herbs. We're basically just gonna mix chives, dill, eggs, and salt and pepper with a whisk. And I'm gonna put them in a pan with some asparagus. For our sides tonight, because I don't think 
I don't think the frittata is gonna be very big with only eight eggs, so I have a couple of sides tonight. Number one, in my air fryer, I have one of those stir fry kits. I took the sauce packets out and just stuck them back in the fridge. I'll use them at a different time. So for this, I'm just gonna put olive oil and salt and pepper in here. This air fryer is a to well, I believe, and I like this one a lot because you, you just set your temperature and your time just like an oven. So if I want it to be at 400 degrees, like a regular oven, for like five minutes, it would do that. Instead of a bunch of the others that have like buttons you have to do. Someone had mentioned they thought this, the air fryer was very hard to clean. And I gotta say, I disagree with that. At least the ones I've used are extremely easy to clean. So I've had the Kasori and this one, and then another one that I can't remember the name of, all very, very easy. I've never tried the Phillips one. I never tried that one, so I don't know. We are also going to do a side of bacon. Those look like they're about done, so I'm gonna pull these out. I love cooking bacon in the oven, it's so easy. Don't forget to save that bacon grease in a jar in your fridge. It's excellent fat to use to like cook chicken on your cast iron pan. It also makes really nice roux if you're gonna make a dumbbell. Here's our completed frittata with the goat cheese on top. It looks a little bubbly. It looks like marshmallows. It isn't. You put marshmallows on the goat? Oh. Here's the roasted vegetables right here. You have bacon and some fruit over there. So there should be plenty for everybody. Um, as I looked at this later, this is actually only supposed to be for four people. <laughs> yeah. But we'll make, make it work, people. Make it work. <laughs> Dinner tonight is a white bean chicken tacos with some recipe adjustments. So it had to cook the spinach in with the onions and beans and garlic, but I don't like cooked spinach because I feel like it gets slimy, so I didn't do that. They're over here and they're fresh. We have a quick made homemade salsa. This just has tomatoes, onions, cilantro, jalapeno, and lime juice and salt. I stuck it in my food processor because I wanted them a little bit on the smaller side. I have some queso fresco and some corn tortillas. I'm gonna heat in my cast iron skillet right before we eat. So here is the dinner. This is a vegetarian meal and let's put together some tacos and see how they taste. What do you think you're doing? Here are the finished tacos. I have the beans and onion garlic mixture on the bottom, my spinach, the fresh salsa, and the queso fresco on top with some lime. And there is a ton. So I think there's enough for each person to have like five of these little tacos. It looks so great, right? For today's recipe, we're gonna start off by roasting. I have one red bell pepper and two jalapenos. The recipe didn't call for these, but why the heck not? I'm just sticking them under my broiler until the skin turns black. Okay, here you go. You've never roasted your own peppers before, you totally should. If you have a gas stove, you can just do it on the flame up here as well, but you want the skin totally black, and now we're gonna put like plastic or something over this. Plastic is the best because it keeps the steam in. We want it to get all steamy so I can peel the black part off and just get the inside. And they got nice and mushy and steamy and I'm worried they're gonna be too hot. If you wanna do this with poblanos and like Anaheim peppers and stick them into like a green Mexican rice, oh, that is good. You see the skin just kind of peels right off. Yeah, you just wanna take all that off. Onto the actual cooking process. Large pan here with a little bit of oil and I'm gonna put the rest of my chorizo that I didn't use from the other recipe and one whole onion and we're gonna saute them together a little bit. Here's our onion and our roasted bell peppers and jalapenos. Of course, you could just get a jar of roasted red bell peppers and do that. You don't have to do this yourself, but I had them and I just wanted to. All the onions are soft, so we're gonna add our spinach now. They said six ounces. This is six ounces, like over eight cups. It's a ton. Woohoo! Look at all that health and fitness. Yes. I've said this before, but I don't love cooked spinach. <laughs> so I don't like the texture of it. I prefer kale, but I forgot to get kale, so we're gonna use spinach. And hopefully the chorizo and potatoes will mask like the slimy texture. Fingers crossed, it still tastes good. My spinach is all wilted down now. So I'm gonna put it into this big bowl and we're gonna cook up our hash browns. Are you even a cook if you don't dump food all over the counter? My husband would say no. 
Time for salt and pepper. I'm gonna use this jalapeno salt on mine. And as soon as the hash browns are cooked, we're gonna add this back in and crack four eggs on top and then we're gonna be done. For sure not my prettiest dish, but it is a hash. It smells amazing. And I think I'm gonna put together a quick salad out of the rest of my spinach with some leftover cherry tomatoes. So let's do like a quick, quick little spinach salad with that, with our hash. Oh, delicious. Last up, we have crisp cauliflower fritters. So we're gonna mix all of this into one bowl. Cauliflower, frozen hash browns, onion, two eggs, cheese, salt and pepper. What? I dropped the hash brown right there. <laughs> it looks so weird. There's a little bit of whole wheat flour, lemon, zest, some garlic. So we're gonna mix all this in this one bowl and mash it up and form some patties out of it making the cauliflower and onions way, way smaller, maybe in a food processor, that would have been better. I feel like they're pretty big. Like, we'll see if they hold together when I cook them. But we're gonna go do a quick shallow pan fry right now. Sliding them off the plate worked the best. Fingers crossed they hold together. For my sauce, I have plain Greek yogurt, some mayonnaise, olive oil and lemon juice. And if you have some green onions, you can add that also. Just stir that up. Here are my completed fritters. They took a long time to cook, but they did solidify a little bit. It was that first side, it was a little touch and go, but it went okay. They're really, really good with the sauce, the sauce that's on top. And then I just had some leftover salad from yesterday. So this is gonna be my dinner tonight. Once again, if you guys forgot all of the recipes that I did and the shopping list that I used to go shop for all of this stuff will be down below in the description box for you. The coconut truffle bites, absolutely go make those. <laughs> Everyone is like, when are you making them again? When are you making them again? Huge, huge hit. That is the end of this video. If you guys don't follow me on Instagram yet, go over and do that. I'll leave that link down below for you. Thank you so much for joining me today. I had a great week cooking with you. I think the Cooking Light magazines are done and the next set of magazines are Bon Appetit. So those should be really, really good recipes. If you wanna hang around for another minute or so, I do have behind the scenes footage for you, just totally like caught stuff on camera and wanted to throw it in at the end just for funsies. So if you want to see that, we'll go do that right now. And if you want to leave, that's cool too. I'll see you in the next video. Bleh. Whatever you do, look away from the light. You want it up higher? I want it up higher. Cause I'm apparently too tall to get the counter and the food and my face in one shot. How tall? Oh my gosh. <laughs> No. Not on purpose. <laughs> I noticed. Is it okay if my head's chopped off? No. People have some opinions about my hair. Like, someone told me I needed to go get a brush. And I was like, God. And you're like, too don't much? you think I've Way tried too much. that? <laughs> a little too... <laughs> a little heavy hand there, Sarah. <laughs> oh, it's still recording. <laughs> you were 8%. I've gone to five before. I too like to live dangerously. <laughs> Aren't you proud? No, no, no. Danger's my middle name. <laughs> you know, I have like every light on and it still feels dark to me. Cause look outside. I know. You gonna turn the ring light up higher? Me? Can you? Am I gonna be blind? I got you, fam. Wow, that is shockingly bright. Okay. Is she glowing yet? Oh my gosh. I know, don't look. Did you hear that squeal? Haley, did you hear that squeal? Yeah. I heard it. <laughs>